Hello, I'm Jill from Ingvid, and today we have a lesson on a way of increasing your vocabulary by turning a positive word into a negative one just by adding a few letters at the front, which is called a negative prefix. Okay, uh, so it's a rather nice way of adding to the, all the words that you know in English. And uh, in English, there are actually 12 different prefixes, negative prefixes. Uh, so what we've done, we have done two separate lessons. Uh, there's another lesson covering five of the negative prefixes that all begin with the letter I. Uh, this one, we have seven, the other seven, which all begin with um, different letters, okay? So, um, just a way to increase your vocabulary, turning a positive word to a negative one. Right, so let's, uh, let's start. And uh, looking first of all at the prefix un, which makes something negative. So if something is believable, you believe it, that seems believable. If someone makes an excuse why they're late for, for their class or for work, they had a believable excuse, a believable reason why they were late. But if you think, oh, that doesn't sound, I don't think I believe that, that doesn't sound right, I think they're lying, <laughs> basically, telling a lie, then their, their reason is unbelievable. That was unbelievable. Okay, so that turns it to the negative. So, there are a lot of words in English which you can add un at the beginning. So, another one. If you're certain about something, you're, you're very sure about it, you know it's true. But if you're uncertain, then you're not sure. Okay. Uh, fair. If things are fair, then it's everything is good. Everybody is being treated equally and um, treated well. But if something is unfair, if someone's handing out chocolates, I keep coming back to chocolates. Um, I wonder why. Um, if someone is handing out chocolates to a room full of people and they give five chocolates to one person, uh, one chocolate to another person, and no chocolates to another person, then that seems a little bit unfair. That's unfair. Everyone should have an equal number. Okay, so unfair. Uh, friendly. We all try to be friendly and nice to each other. If people are friendly, that's great. But if they're unfriendly, if they're not very nice, um, then that's the opposite, of course, unfriendly. That woman was rather unfriendly. Okay. And then happy. If you're happy, everything's going well. But then something bad happens and it makes you unhappy. Unhappy. Okay. Um, kind. When people behave nicely, they're kind to each other. And then the opposite would be unkind. Again, if someone does something not very nice, that was an unkind thing to do. Okay. Uh, lucky, if you're a lucky person, if you, if you go in for competitions and uh, the lottery, things like that, and you win some money or you win a prize quite often, um, then you're a lucky person good things happen to you, or just life in general, you feel, I've, I've been very lucky getting a good job, finding somewhere nice to live, etc. I've been very lucky. Uh, but if, if it's the opposite and a lot of things go wrong all the time, or you never win uh, a prize or anything or a competition, then you're unlucky. That was unlucky. That was an unlucky day. Everything went wrong. Okay. P 
popular. Um, if lots of people like you, then you're popular. But if there's someone that people don't seem to like, they don't have much to do with them. They don't have a nice chat uh, conversation with them. Uh, they stay away from them. Then that person is unpopular for whatever reason. People don't like to be with that person. They're unpopular. Okay. So sure is a bit like certain, certain and sure. I'm, I'm sure I did well in the exam. I'm sure. Um, but if you're not sure, you feel a little bit unsure. You're unsure about how you did in the exam. It's hard to know. Did I do well? I, I'm not sure. I'm unsure. Okay. And then finally in this column, tidy is when you keep your room, your house tidy. Everything looks nice. There's not a lot of stuff lying all over the place. It's very tidy. You keep your room tidy, clean and tidy. But if you just leave everything lying about all over the place and dirty dishes, you've had a meal and you just left the dirty dishes and the cutlery just lying around on the floor and it's smelling and horrible, then that's untidy, untidy. Uh, he's such an untidy person. He leaves things lying around uh, his room. Okay. So let's move on to the next column. So dis is another prefix to turn words to the negative. So if you agree with someone, you say, yes, yes, I think so too. I agree. I agree. But if you don't agree with them, then you disagree. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have to disagree with you there. I don't think the same as you. I disagree. Okay. Um, appear. If someone appears, you see them. Oh, hello. A friend comes into the room. They appear. But then if they, they go away again, um, oh, where did he go? Where did he go? He's disappeared. He's disappeared. Okay. Honest. It's good to try to be honest all the time, tell the truth. But some people, I'm sure we've all met some people who are dishonest. They're not honest. They tell you lies. They trick you. They deceive you. Dishonest. Okay, so you have to be careful. If you can tell if someone is dishonest, then maybe you avoid having anything to do with them. So, okay, like, nice simple word, if you like somebody or you like something, that's the positive. If you don't like it, you dislike it or you dislike that person, dislike, okay. And finally in this column, trust, again, it's like honest. Can you trust this person? Can you believe what they tell you? Yes, I trust that person or no, I I don't trust that person. I distrust, distrust that person. I'm not sure they're telling the truth all the time. I distrust them. Okay. This one, fairly obvious with non as the prefix, non, like no. Um, and usually this one has the actual hyphen included in the word, whereas all the others, um, you would just have the extra letters, but no hyphen. So this one, usually, apart from here with nonsense, uh, you get the little hyphen, the little mark there. So with fiction, fiction is a book that's a, a story, um, not, not a true story, not a true history, but just a story or a novel um, that's, that's with characters in it who aren't real people. So that's fiction. But if you prefer books which are about real people uh, or history, then it's non-fiction. It's the opposite of fiction. It's non-fiction. Okay. So sense, when things make sense, they sound logical. 
Um, but if you say, no, that, that's nonsense. What you've just told me is nonsense. That can't possibly be true. Nonsense. Sometimes you hear uh, what's called fake news nowadays, or you see it on the internet, and it's hard to tell sometimes. Is that real news or is it fake news? Is it true or not? Um, so if it's nonsense, uh, it's like fake news. You can't really believe it. it it's not possible. So, okay. Uh, a smoker, someone who smokes cigarettes, etc. Pipes and cigars, tobacco of any kind, a smoker. But then there's the non-smoker who does not smoke, non-smoker. Okay. And you can have rooms in hotels which are non rooms for non-smokers and carriages on the train uh, which are for non-smokers. In fact, I think in the UK, I don't think you can smoke on the train anymore. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, not not legal anymore. It's been banned to smoke anywhere on a train or on the train platform even. So in public places now it's restricted. So non-smokers are people who don't smoke. Uh, stick, if something sticks, it's sort of stuck like glue or something. Two pieces of paper stuck together. Um, Non-stick usually um, is a description for um, something like a frying pan that you use. A non-stick frying pan. Okay. A frying pan that you fry. Oh, you might fry an egg. You might fry some onions, anything like that. And if it's non-stick, it means the food doesn't stick to the bottom of the frying pan. Okay, so most modern frying pans are non-stick. They have a special um, covering on them to stop the food sticking. Okay. Uh, stop, that's a simple word when you stop. But if you do something non-stop or the train, the train is non-stop from London to Scotland, to Edinburgh, non-stop train. It means it doesn't stop anywhere on the way uh, from London to Edinburgh, which is a very long way. I don't know if there is such a train that doesn't stop anywhere on the way, but you would say it's non-stop to somewhere or we did we were working yesterday non-stop from nine in the morning until nine in the evening we worked non-stop we didn't stop for a break or anything so that's non-stop okay good um, then we have some very uh, short ones which aren't used with many words uh, just an A can be a negative prefix. So a, a theist is anyone who believes in a god of some kind, any god. But an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in any gods at all. They just don't think there is such a thing as, as god or a god or gods. So that's an atheist who just doesn't have any religious belief at all, okay? And typical, if something's typical, it happens all the time. Oh, what she did then was typical. She's always doing that. You know, maybe throwing rubbish on the floor in the street, um, which is a bad thing to do, but that's typical of her throwing, throwing papers and rubbish on, onto the pavement uh, rather than taking it home and putting it in the bin when she gets home. That's so typical of her. So that's typical, something someone does regularly that you expect them to do. But if it's atypical, that means it's not typical. So it's a bit unusual for that to happen. Okay. So if she 
amazingly one day, keeps her rubbish and takes it home and puts it in the bin instead of throwing it on the pavement, then you could say that's atypical of her. She usually throws it in the street. So, okay. Then AB, ab, um, goes with a small number, not many of words. So normal, I'm sure you know the word normal, um, whatever normal means, but normal, uh, whatever your definition of normal is. So if something is abnormal, it's the opposite of normal. If, if you think I'm normal, for example, I don't know if you do, uh, but if you think I'm normal, um, then that, okay, thank you. <laughs> but if you think I'm abnormal, <laughs> you may think I, I'm a bit strange, so you would call me abnormal. Oh, she's an abnormal tutor, <laughs> something like that. So it's a sort of slightly personal opinion word, whether something is abnormal or not, but whether it happens a lot. It's a bit like typical and atypical, normal, abnormal. It's what you're used to, what you expect from somebody. Okay. Um, this is a, I think, as far as I know, that there's only one of these with an as the prefix, and it's a rather scientific kind of term, um, maybe used in chemistry that kind of biology, that sort of thing. Um, hydrus just means something that contains water. Okay, from the Greek word for water. Uh, but if something is anhydrous, that just means it doesn't, it contains no water. It has no water in it. So it's something completely dry with no water at all, no moisture in it at all no liquid. Okay. And then finally, um, we have anti, which is a fairly obvious negative. Anti, meaning to go against something. So biotic is, uh, well, this one, it's usually used with the negative antibiotic because it's to do with medicine and uh, pills that you take to fight uh, an infection. If you have an infection, you take antibiotics because they fight the, the bacteria that are causing the infection, okay? So bio is to do with um, the, the body, the human body, okay? So to fight infection, antibiotic. Um, clockwise, this is quite a useful one. If, if you do something in a clockwise um, direction, the, the direction that the, the hands of the clock go, they go round in that direction, clockwise, uh, from here to round to there. But if it's the other way round, if it's around this way, that's anti-clockwise. Okay, and then finally, uh, social. If someone is social, they're friendly, they like chatting to people. Uh, but if someone is antisocial, they tend to stay on their own. They don't seem to like talking very much or getting to know people, having conversations. They're antisocial. Okay. And then finally, just a few little words to show that not every word beginning with these letters is necessarily negative. There are words that just happen to begin with those letters. Um, I'm sure you know most of these. So under just means under something. It's not a negative. If you discuss something, you just talk about it. There's no negative there. Uh, display, if you put things out on a table to show someone or in an exhibition in an art gallery, there's a display to look at. That's not really a negative. Able, we've got ab here, but able is not a negative. It just means you're able to do something. You can do something. And uh, an angry, 
just means angry, uh, feeling mad, annoyed by something. It's not necessarily, well, it's not a very pleasant emotion. Uh, it's a bit negative, I suppose, but this isn't a negative prefix on the front. It just happens to begin with those two letters. Okay, so I hope that's helped to help you expand your vocabulary and um, understand how negative prefixes work. Uh, do have a look at the other lesson with the other five. Um, and also, if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, and do the quiz. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, if you'd like to uh, see more, see more of me, <laughs> um, that would be great. And see you again soon. Okay, bye. <laughs>